Well, good morning, church. I uh, want to let you know that I've been praying for everybody, thinking about what's going on, listening, and even observing myself, and just the different emotions. I mean, we had one set of emotions that were going on when this first started, and now we have a whole, a whole other addition of emotions going on. Um, some of us are like, oh, is there light at the end of the tunnel? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, some things <clears throat> look like they're about ready to change and and then and then a lot of things are still not gonna change. And it seems like there's definitely disappointment going on. There's uh, still a measure of loneliness going on. There is, and what I've been hearing lately, there's like an uptick in, in frustration uh, going on. There's a measure of impatience. Um, so I was praying about um, wanting to share something with you all, and, but yet I knew it needs to be, I don't want you to, we need to hear from the Lord. We always need to hear from God. And so we pray and say, Lord, talk to us, will you? You know, help us to hear your voice and to follow you. And uh, I was encouraged this morning because this morning's devotion, I think, was the Lord saying, this is, this is what you need right now. This is what you need. And, uh, and this is the message I want you to share. So I'm going to share with you uh, my devotion from this morning. And then and Carmen, actually, her devotion uh, fell right in the, along the same line. And so she'll share what she has. So I typically read through the Psalms. Uh, in the morning and this morning psalm was psalm 95 and it said come let us sing for joy to the lord let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song for the lord is the great god the great king above all gods in his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Mirabah as you did that day at Massa, in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Now, this passage points back to an event that happened in Exodus, when the children of Israel were in the desert, uh, Exodus 17, the first seven verses reads, you can tickle him if you want to, but I'll, <laughs> it's fidgeting a lot. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled, with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Mirabah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? In this Bible, it had this note. Again, the people complained 
about their problem instead of praying. Some problems can be solved by careful thought or by rearranging our priorities. Some can be solved by discussion and good counsel, but some problems can be solved only by prayer. We should make a determined effort to pray when we feel like complaining, because complaining only raises our level of stress. Prayer quiets our thoughts and emotions and prepares us to listen. You know, as I thought about my own level of frustration at this point in time, I feeling like I just want, I'm ready for some of this to end. I, I really, I don't want to miss what God had for me or for us during this time. I don't want to miss that. But what do I do when I'm starting to feel frustrated or confused about it? And for me, what I realized is the one thing that always works for me is to humble myself before God. And that's what the Psalm said. Come, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Let us bow down. And when I humble myself before God, and I will take my place before Him, and I accept what He has given, and submit to Him, that's when I start to get more peace. That's when I get the joy, and I get the strength that I need. Because when I'm humbling myself, that's how I'm drawing near to God. And trusting in him. Carolyn, can you share mm -hmm. what you read? So, as we were having our devotion this morning, Sam shared that with me, and I I thought it really complemented and went along well with what I was reading this morning. Um, I chose to read out of Esther, uh, the Bible study this morning, and in the side margin, um, just so you know, I'm on page 22 for those ladies that are in this uh, Bible study as well. It says, uh, being calm means being settled, firm, immovable, steadfast, and peaceful in spirit. A calm disposition is like a still peaceful pool of water as opposed to a churning whirlpool that's agitated and stirred up. A calm spirit goes hand in hand with trusting the Lord. God's love quiets us and is the source of our calm. And uh, all of that just really spoke to me about there is an amazing effect of, of trusting in the Lord and the calm. Nothing else seems to be able to bring me calm quite like that. Um, when I, just like what Sam was talking about, as far as just humbly coming before the Lord um, and trusting the Lord, there is a great calm that, that seems to come over me like nothing else. All right, let's pray together. Dear God, we're going through a desert time. And I praise you, Lord, that you are merciful and you do provide us water at different moments. But Lord, I pray that we would humble ourselves before you and be submissive and not grumble and not complain. I pray that we will trust in you and find our calm and find our peace find our joy in the midst of this storm or in the midst of this desert. Uh, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for your word. And thank you for the church that we get to be part of. We praise you in Jesus' name.